Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again, and we are back here with some more Sunderland career mode. Now, uh, this is into episode number three. We're coming in on the back of episode number two, understandably. And uh, a decent start in that one. Three points from a game against uh, Southampton, and three points from a game against Fulham. So, a very, very nice start to the season. Two 1 0 wins as well. So, uh, hopefully, we can keep the clean sheet run continuing. And we start this one with a tough trip, to be fair. White Hart Lane is definitely not a very good place to uh, try and go and get three points. Well, not a very easy place to try and go and get three points. But Oliveira there with a good chance. Good feet to get away from Kabul. And unfortunately drills it just wide. And then Oliveira involved again into Honda here, who again shows great feet to get away from the defenders. And how is that for a finish? His left foot was instrumental in uh, helping us find a lofty 8th place in the league last season and uh, this season started off no different whatsoever a very very tough game away at Tottenham and uh, he get what a finish wraps his foot around it to rifle it into the far post and the Honda, Honda gets us off to a great start at White Hart Lane we're into the second half now lovely ball over the top for Loic Remy and uh, who incidentally is actually uh, rumoured to have uh, completed a signing to uh, Newcastle in the past 24 48 hours as I'm recording this it's Sunday afternoon uh, and uh, they were, Newcastle are apparently going to announce it tomorrow apparently Marseille have already uh, already announced from their end that the deal has been completed but Remy then misses the penalty so that's three games four penalties none of which have been scored two of which we haven't even had to save because they've been missed or shot wide so to speak Remy wide there and uh, R R Ramirez wasn't it for Southampton put the ball over the bar so we get a let off there and Nelson Oliveira here great feet second half and a wonderfully powerful finish right into the top corner in the 78th minute and uh, I was absolutely delighted to be 2-0 up away at Spurs definitely an unexpected result but perhaps it could be a sign of what's to come with this uh, with this new team and in the new season with the uh, the financial backing we have behind us now if we can keep this sort of performance up uh, for the foreseeable future at least and get ourselves a decent uh, get a decent start in the league and decent foothold higher up the table then maybe we could get that Europa League spot that uh, that the board want and we want you know we want to finish in Europe we want to be playing in Europe in the third season we don't want to go two two seasons in a row without qualifying so uh, we're going to try our best to finish as high as possible now after a very very quiet uh, transfer deadline day Stoke as you just saw is now gone you can uh, go back and pause it if you want to read it uh, Stoke announced that they've had a huge financial uh, influx of money just like ourselves and uh, they announce it one day after the transfer window closes so uh, very very well done there Stoke you've uh, absolutely outdone yourselves but uh, anyway on the back of that we come into this game against uh, Crystal Palace actually it's a Capital One Cup game second round because I think it's second round Premier League clubs come into the uh, the second round of the Carnegie Cup I think so I started quite a strong ish first team because obviously Crystal Palace are a half decent championship side in real life they're doing very very well sat near the top of the table so I didn't want to I didn't want to underestimate them I didn't want to uh, you know have a potential upset on our hands we obviously want to uh, you know a cup run would be fantastic the the board want us to do very very well in a, a domestic cup whether that be the the Capital One Cup or the uh, the FA Cup so I mean that's coming to that one coming to this one with uh, a very strong side and there's uh, Stephen Fletcher here with a good finish there's only one place he can put that ball right between those two defenders right into the far bottom corner and a very very lovely finish uh, he's not been playing too well actually considering uh, obviously he's been out of the team for a little bit his confidence will uh, not be as high as it potentially could be because Nelson Oliveira has been keeping him out but I did take Honda off for Oliveira here just to see how well they got on together as a partnership and uh, they linked up quite well there although Oliveira was only able to draw a decent save from the keeper and not pop it in the back of the net but that is how that one finished so we avoid an upset and come out of that one and progress into the next round of the Capital One Cup and I think we've been drawn against Oldham if memory serves correctly so uh, again it's going to be a pretty difficult uh, pretty difficult uh, game to come into but again you know we will be expected to progress now uh, obviously in the background here you can see some uh, some international games I am simming them uh, with uh, with Sweden, I'm not really sure what to do with the international management thing. I was absolutely delighted when uh, we got the offer. You know, come be the manager of Sweden. I was like, oh, international management, this is new. Yeah, I'd love to, but I'm kind of getting a little bit bored of it now. It's kind of becoming a little bit stale. I'm not sure whether to uh, stay at Sweden, try and get them to qualify for the World Cup in Rio in uh, next summer in 2014 and then take them in through that tournament and then resign or whether I should just wash my hands of it, have done with it and uh, resign now and let someone else take that on and maybe if I'm going to get back into international management wait for uh, you know one of the big six uh, your England's uh, 
France, Sco Scotland, sorry, not Scotland, sorry, any Scottish people watching, England, France, Spain, Germany, Italy or Portugal, you know, one of those six, and we'll try and wait for one of the big teams to come in for us, but uh, I'm, again, I'm not really sure what to do, so let me know with a comment down below what you think we should do on the international side of things, and uh, we'll crack on with uh, some league action that we've got on in the background here, we're at home against Aston Villa in their lovely fluorescent green kit and Nelson Oliveira there proving that he can score goals with his head as well as his feet lovely finish after uh, in the 39th minute after a purple patch really in the game um, we went 1-0 up just after the half hour mark and then Yaconan equalised almost immediately a couple of minutes later bring it back to 1-1 and then Oliveira obviously as you saw went up the other end scored made it 2-1 and we could have made it 3-1 here at Honda with a good free kick that uh, Shea Given does save very well just underneath the bar uh, just before half time and then after a pretty much a poor second half really it was a bit of a damp squib after that at the end of the first half Tiago Ribeiro here uh, getting through very very well with some nice footwork but unfortunately he tries to be a little bit too precise with his finish he tries to get it right into that top corner and hits the bar and then Yaconan isn't able to follow up with a finish of his own so we do take a 2-1 win from that one so that gives us four wins out of four in the league and a progression in the Carling Cup or Capital One Cup sorry so far this season so we're uh, extremely delighted with the way that this season has started so far and also their uh, Spurs winning away at Old Trafford so any potential teams at the top uh, are dropping points as well but we actually sit second behind QPR of all teams uh, maybe they have got Cal Frizi involved in uh, in my save as well sitting QPR top of the table on 12 points us in second Chelsea third with 10 and Spurs who we uh, obviously beat earlier on in this episode sat fourth with nine so we uh, Absolutely delighted with the way that this season is going so far. I have got another couple of episodes recorded. So uh, again, leave the video a like if you could be so kind, guys. That would be fantastic. Uh, the uh, the last Career Mode episode got a fantastic response. Obviously, we had a load of Ultimate Team uh, pack openings last week with uh, the Team of the Year. And uh, the return of Career Mode was very much welcomed. And uh, the response was very much welcomed as well. Fantastic response. Loads of comments, loads of likes, loads of views as well. It's been absolutely fantastic. And hopefully by now, the, uh, the channel should have been partnered as well. So uh, fingers crossed that's been done by now hopefully it will be done on uh, on Monday this will probably be going up on Thursday ish I would have thought so again I'm um, I always do this at the end of videos don't I I just ramble on again and again and again anyway right I'm gonna end it thank you very much for watching guys leave the video a like that would be amazing and uh, I love you all you're all amazing and uh, I will see you in a couple of days with uh, an ultimate team video cheers guys I'll catch you later